All right, we are back with another edition of Action Pose Position Clothed. And forgive my voice as I've got some ice in my mouth. Let me sharpen my pencil. All right, so now let's get, get let's get to getting. If my camera wants to do right with me. So again, always do your border, top, bottom. I know I'm not focused right now, but borders doesn't make a difference. Focus on my hand. That way you know your picture won't go out of bounds. Out of bounds. Now, first thing you want to do is your torso. Torso. Leave room for your head. This is going to be a crouch. This is going to be like a Wolverine kind of kind of position. Crouching, coming at you. Let's go, camera. Let's go. Let's go. And I said one day I'm get one of expensive cameras, but the way I have my camera set up, I, I, I don't know if I can do that with one of those expensive vlogging cameras, which would be completely different from what I'm doing. All right, torso, torso. Leaving room for the head, imaginary head. Torso, which is an oval, not really a circle. And I keep doing this till I get the, the, the uh, desired shape that I want. And I kind of like will automatically know where when I when I got it. Could have had it moved over a little bit, but that's okay. No, it's not okay because I want the arm to come out kind of like the Wolverine. So let's do that again. It's all right to erase. A lot of people won't erase. They're afraid to erase. When you erase, you realize that your picture is not right. And by erasing, you know you're going to make it better next time. Okay, so this oval is going to be over more. So I get the desired shape. Then I want to find out where my uh, act direction line is. I'm going to do the beetle. I'm going to do the beetle. Direction line is going to be here. And I've got to go fast because if I don't, it'll got to be stiff. All right, camera. Next time my camera does that, just shout and I will hear you. It just doesn't like the white paper. I guess maybe the white and the brown just contrast and it doesn't know what to focus on. So I'm going to do this. I want to do, he's going to be leaning over. So I'm going to take that collarbone and we're going to bring it down a little bit. Before I do that, I need to do a rough sketch because I said if I don't, then my picture will be stiff. That, my mountain, I'm just going to do these steps and then I'll re-rough it for you guys. Then my direction or the, the sides, the V is going to come here at this point. So this is actually going to be a V too, not straight across. It's going to be a V because he's leaning forward. It's going to come here and put the head. The head is going to be down into the shoulders. Here's the shoulders. It is going to be down here. One arm is going to be up. One arm is going to be down. So the delt is going to be down here because it comes off and it actually goes kind of like in the center of that delt. The other delt is on the back. So it's going to be a circle here. This one is going to be here up. So already he's got that lean, he's leaning forward. I can bring the head down a little bit more, but we'll see once I get the rest of the body. I should not have I should not have detailed this because my feet might go off. Curve this, curve this, and then we're gonna curve that. So it's gonna be kind of like an S. S is this way, so it's a reverse S. That's right. Is it? A reverse S, whatever. So because he's leaning over, you're not going to have a lot of waist here. You're not going to have the tunic hand. It's going to be way back. It's going to be higher. And the hips are going to be up high. So let's keep going. So my, it's going to follow this. It's going to follow that. The waist. And then your upside down house, if you're going to follow that curve, that's going to be the center of your crotch, wherever that, this point is. And then you have this and this. So basically, I've got like kind of this S going with the whole thing, kind of, until I get it figured out. Bring this down some more. So... Following the beetle, we're going to have the chest just above this little, the mount of the cave, the mountain or train, train tunnel. Stay with one word, Brian. Curves up, curves up for the chest. Into the delt. 
Delt, delt, right? Bicep, oval, depending on the angle of his back, if it's forward. And then the cylinder, not cylinder, the cone. I may change that. Because I'm drawing like really slow. Comes down, bring this down. And then this comes, you want to go back? Yeah, let's go back with it like that. So the, the cone is going to be here. This is going to be your front circle. This is going to be your back circle. This is going to be your oval. And then you get some chest, some lap, because the chest is going to come and connect to this. So it's going to be like this. A lot of times you can do one piece. If I'm bending it really over, I'll do like one whole piece like this. Kind of like um, shoulder pads for somebody playing ball. But I want to bend them down a little bit more. So this is going to have to disappear. So we're going to come around here. This. This is going to be in more. And I'm going to curve this so much. And it's a hard part for me, it's like figuring out um, positions. So what I want to show, I want to show you this, what I want to do, trying to do, I'm trying to bring this leg up. Bring this leg up. So this is going to be your back circle, your front circle, where your knee is going to be. And your leg, when your leg comes up, it's going to take on this shape here. It's going to slope in. It's going to come up like this, and it's going to curve around like that. You're going to have this little dip in here like somebody took a bite out of a cookie. And then you're going to have this. Your knee's going to be here, and then your calf, and the rest of your leg. So this is going to be your, your shin bone. Calf is going to come around, and then you're going to have your foot here. This might come out a little bit more depending on the angle you're looking at it. You have this, and this other leg is going to be back. It's going to be kind of like, I told you, like the kind of walking Wolverine kind of thing. This is why I have to draw fast. A lot of people are like, oh, you're drawing too fast. But I have to because it's, it becomes, what's the word, stiff if I don't. And I don't want to be like, oh, you can't draw. Look at the position. It's so stiff. Yeah, because I'm drawing slow. I remember one guy, the only guy I ever blocked, I ever blocked him because he just wouldn't stop. He's like, you're just drawing wrong. you draw. you can't, you're teaching them wrong. You don't know how to draw. And then I would, I would tell him, I said, uh, well, use your great skills. And then um, you teach the world, show the world, you know, and I'll, I'll be glad. I'll glad to shut my channel down when you start showing them how to draw right. And then he kept, you know, I'm trying to be nice. You know, I'm like, look, I'm basically trying to teach people. I'm not worried about if my stuff is perfect. I'm trying to get people to learn how to draw. And he just kept on and kept on. And I guess he couldn't say anything else. He's like, you, you fat and you can't draw. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> just, just, uh, so I blocked him. That's the only person I ever blocked because he just wouldn't stop. He's just one of those, um, what do you call that? I'll think of it in a second. Yeah, he's just bugging the hell out of me. Trolls. I'm gonna bring this leg out some more because it's it's in. It's like almost like he'll fall over. But I kind because I, I you know I answer all my I try to answer all my um, comments because I don't have like millions of followers so you know I can I can answer because not not too many people leave comments so. I try to answer all my comments, yeah, but this guy was like, you know, and I'm not going to be like, you know, a, a douchebag about somebody say, oh, you, this is wrong and that's wrong, and I'll say, okay, thank you, I'll check it out or whatever, but this guy, he just like, you're in the basement and you're just criticizing people. Front circle, get off of that, get off, let that go, front circle, rear circle, that's why I'm having trouble drawing, I'm meditating on the past. You can't drive forward. If you're looking in the rear view mirror, you're going to crash eventually. So, yeah.
That is my wor words of wisdom to people. Let it go. Nothing can bother you. Nothing on this planet can really bother you. It, it's just the way that you look at it that bothers you. That's more wisdom. If somebody says something to me like, oh, you know, you're, you're going bald. Okay. Unless I just keep that in my head. Oh, he, he said that I'm going bald. I miss him. You know, that, that bothers me. But it shouldn't bother me. If I don't, it won't bother me if I don't let it bother me. So that's, you know, people, you think about that. Nothing can bother you. It's just the way that you think of it that bothers you. So if you don't think of something, if you don't just put your, continue to keep your focus on something, nothing can bother you. Nothing. If your best friend died, you know, it's like we all die. You know, I could like go crazy and get on medications because my, my buddy's gone. Or I could like, you know, that's part of life. I'm going to die one day. We all die. It won't bother me. It's just how I perceive it that bothers me. So draw and lay out the words of wisdom. So okay, you get this, this foot is going to be up, so you probably won't see this foot, depending on what his foot is on. So this foot will be more flat. So that's going to be more of a um, triangle. Because he's stepping on something. He's coming over maybe some rubble or whatever. And uh, we got this twist. We got this. This shows you that he's bending over and it is hot in this room. I don't know why. This chest is going to come out a little bit more. We have your mountain. It's going to be twisted. So you're going to see some, some um, it's going to curve in and you see some, the love handle, which is your, I don't know why I cannot remember that. What that's called. Because once this curves in, you have this little piece here. And don't let it bother you, Brian. Nothing can bother you unless you let it. Oblique. There you go. I need to, it starts with an O. If I can remember that, then yeah. Yeah, there you go. So we have that. He's bent over. The first set of abs is going to be right where that circle comes around. Let that be your first set of abs here. Because he's bent over, your second set is not going to be elongated it's going to be like closer so it's going to be close to those and remembering this whole thing is round and your third set is going to be round two I'll bring that down a little bit more yeah so we have this you have the oval and then you have your front circle rear circle and i said i was going to do something with that <clears throat> front circle rear circle and this hand is going to be somehow out of some way. It's going to be straight. It's going to be tilted up. I don't know. If I'm doing a story, then I'll know the positions that I need. But if I'm just drawing just a position, just, just draw a position, that kind of hard for me to do. So in my mind, every time I draw, I try to imagine some kind of, some type of story. That's why when you see my videos and I do some kind of character, I always kind of give him some life, some type of life to him, him or her. Now I can have this one down like that, or I can bring it up like right in front of your face, like this rear circle, front circle, and then the fist. Or I could bring it in more, but I don't want to be, I don't want to change it too much because that's too much time going by. So I think I will have it meet it in the middle somewhere, halfway to the, in the middle. So we have your oval and then you have your triangle, AKA cone. So let's just stop it right there. Once you get learn how to do cones and cylinders and, and so forth, it becomes very simple to draw. There's a point right here at the bicep which separates your your um, forearm, your tricep back here, elbow, and your bicep right there. And then your hand, however you want to put your hand. If I want to curve it in, if I want to have it out, I don't know yet. That's why you draw your shapes and you figure what you want to do. Like this hand, it's going back. I don't know, straight back, I guess, I guess. Move point, because this is about clothes. 
once you put your clothes on and I'm saying this in every video once you put your clothes on you won't see all of these muscle I'm just drawing this to give you a two for one you learn how to draw the anatomy and then you learn how to um, dress it so your neck is going to come down to this point here and then your your uh, shoulder which is your trap tra not yeah traps trapezoid trapezius muscles right here it's gonna come here and into that little triangle right here point right there and it was something I was going to branch off and show you, but I forgot what that was. So this, do this, and this, do this, and this. Remember, this comes in. This, this, it doesn't, it doesn't, if this is the top up, come on, Brian. If this is the top where your muscles are like this, this actually comes in just a bit so that you can have your obliques or your love handles. I, Try not to draw on the paper that I want to really keep. So yeah, so this is going to come in like this, following that center curve, and then you're going to have your love handles here. So it's going to come in like this, and your obliques are going to be here. This is your uh, rib cage. This goes down into the crotch, the leg like this, and then this is the actual part for your buttocks, your bone, the hip. So again, it's going to come in a little bit. I know it's, it's twisted this way, so it's going to have to still follow that curve. So I'm going to have this one and this one in here, and you're just going to have more oblique right here. So this one's going to have to come in and follow that curve. And that's why I was screwing up that then I did not follow. And I don't like to use pencil because now I can't see what I'm doing. Is blurred and I'm twisted in my chair just so I can see so this is gonna be here so this is turn so this is the center of your crotch gonna hit this so you're gonna get more leg and less hip so your legs are gonna be like this and your hip is gonna be like that but I have to break away from it and see because you always walk away from your drawing. Once you say, oh, it's done and complete and you're ready to ink it, no, walk away. If you have to ink it the next day, walk away from it. Come back and then you will see your mistakes. So my knee is going to be here. This comes up right here. It goes in. There's that V right here. There's your other part of your leg muscle. This diamond represents where your knee is going to be. And then you have your calf that knee is going to be here same thing here you have this which comes in it's going to come down it's going to curve up back in here and this v there this calf might be a little big for me i might need to bring that down a little bit more maybe maybe not So what is this? This is, 19, this is only 19 minutes into this drawing? I don't want the drawing to be any more than 30 minutes. And then I'll give another 30 minutes to uh, doing the clothes and whatever, showing you guys more examples in clothes. So they give me an extra 30 minutes, 15 minutes to talk and 15 minutes to actually put wrinkles in clothes. But I want to finish, finish what? I want to figure out what kind of clothes I'm putting on the, the character. So realistically, I am doing my positions first and then I will clothe them later. So I'm doing all these positions first, just getting it out the way so I can get loose and then I'll turn around and put clothes on these guys. And then, yeah, so that's just me showing you my little cheating secret. So I'm not dressing them all in one video because I don't know what I'm going to put. I might like put a hoodie on this guy, a sweatsuit or you know, some something. So yeah, get the positions first, then figure out how I'm gonna dress them. And then, yeah, good to go in the video. So yeah, as I say, I would say, okay, this is finished. Then I would walk away. I go get a sandwich or use the bathroom or go talk to somebody. And I don't talk to, I don't talk to anybody. I live alone now. Um, and then come back and then, um, see where my mistakes are and I'm looking at the video at my monitor and the drawing at the same time see where my mistakes are and then once I figure that out correct them 
Then I'll go ahead and ink it. If I was going to ink it or do whatever I was going to do to it. So this is like that. And this is like that. Take some of these lines out. Because what I'm going to do is, is uh, photocopy this, the original. And I'm going to dress the original. That way I can erase some of this stuff. So Because you won't see it with the clothes. And the photocopy, the actual photocopy part will be this, what you see. And I'll compare them at the end of each video, which I haven't finished the video yet because I just showed you that what I was doing. Why are you putting an ear on it? Just put the ear on it so I can see where the face is going to be at. It's the ear, chin, neck. Neck is going to come up in more and then that. And I'll, I'll put a hand on later because I have no idea what I'm going to do to the hand. I'll get it all spruced up and finished. Then I'll photocopy it and then I'll come back and refinish the video make that leg a little wider but that leg is actually supposed to be going back so this would be the back circle this would be the front circle so yeah and i think i will do one more position and then come find some clothes for them and then come back so this video will be well this video is over i'm going to do one more drawing and then probably tomorrow because it's kind of late right now uh finish it but you won't know because it'll be like just seamless 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 all right yeah this is this is complete i'm looking at it in the monitor it looks good to me i'll fix the hands up and take some of the extra lines out and then go from there yeah yeah okay so here we are with the finished product and before i dress it address it i want to go over a few things about wrinkles and folds and so forth because the the object is not for you to draw what I draw just like copying and then think that okay that's it I drew that one picture but now I can't draw another picture because I only know how to draw that one picture but it's to get you to be able to understand it so that you can apply it to any picture that you draw so let's go into uh, just a few wrinkles real quick wrinkles fold so forth so on so I pulled out my old dusty GI Joe and he's wearing black it's hard for me to see it in the monitor, but I think once um, it goes into editing, you'll be able to see it. And it's it's okay, but it's, it's not the greatest thing because it's really short and the material is like really not the greatest material. But as I was saying, your 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 creases are going to be in the crotch here, here, and here. So one thing is you won't be able to just draw the same crease everywhere. I mean, if you if you want to just do something like, and it's going to be a long video, okay, this is going to be a long one, so I'll just, won't talk when I draw the anatomy. If you just want to do something like, here's a t-shirt, and just put lines like that, I mean, you can do that, but I mean, if you want to really get serious about it, I've got a light behind me, so I think that might be distorting some of the picture. But okay, so if you want to get really serious about it, then you're going to have to kind of learn how to do the wrinkles. But there's not just one type of wrinkle or compression. There are different types. So you have to apply it where it applies. I guess you can say that. So, but I can say that there are a few that will always apply at the same place. And one is like at the back of the leg. When you bend that leg, you're going to have this one. Where's my camera? that is shaped like this that you kind of shape so if you have uh somebody with a bent leg it's going to come down it's always going to come down because you have your fold when you push your um fabric together it's going to fold like that so if you take a paper, a paper uh, um a uh, towel or something and i did this in the first video and you push them together it's going to have these that little up and down wavy mountain type thing uh, yeah camera's not gonna be happy with this video you can see and I'll, I'll post it later it's gonna be like this it's gonna go up and down like that you know the, the, the harder you push it together the tighter it's gonna be so that kind of pattern won't apply to everything it's just in the knee and sometimes it will be in the arm but there's more fabric in the arm to um, 
create other kind of folds and wrinkles in the, in the knee. It's not, um, it's basically usually, it's always gonna be there in, in that leg, but in that arm, it's gonna be something different. So the one thing you have to remember is where there is a mountain, there's gonna be a valley. So this is gonna have that second line, just like one of these here. It's gonna be that line where you fold it. So you, you will see this little thick line. <clears throat> As I said, there's a valley and there's a valley, there's a mountain, and there's gonna be another valley. But the question is what's gonna be the shape of that other mountain. It won't be like this. It won't be like that. It takes different shapes, but just know that anytime you bend your leg, it's going to be like that. And in the knee, it's going to kind of pull. So you're going to have somewhat of these pulling lines. And the pulling lines are, if you pull something so tight, you have these, you have lines. Let's see if I can get my fingers in here. I don't want to tear it, but you have like these pull lines. So if this was tight, and I poke my finger up through it. All right, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, this is different. It's difficult for you, it's really difficult for you. So if I pull this tight, you'll have these lines coming down around that. So that's the same thing if your knee, the tighter you pull it, the, the, the um, closer the lines are gonna be, just like pushing it together. But if you loosen it up and just come up, you'll still have it, but the, the lines will be more um, space apart. All right, let's get back to the GI Joe real quick. So hopefully you can see this because in my monitor, it is, it is crazy dark. The fabric is not gonna just lay flat or just straight. It's not gonna stretch straight on your arm. Whenever you move your arm, your arm rotates and it's gonna twist that fabric. Um, I'm, hopefully, it, it works out in editing, hopefully. So however you do, however you move your arm, it's gonna twist, it's gonna twist that fabric. Now, the hard part about doing arms is that you have this twisted fabric and your arm is not always going to be down. Your arm is going to face you. So it's like, what does it look like when you twist it and you put it towards you? So I tried this little experiment before I did this. Hopefully it will work. Hopefully it'll work. So I'm going to wrap this around here lightly so I can get a little twist to it. So as I say, once you, if you have a long sleeve shirt on, you notice that it's, it kind of, it twists from the back of your shoulder, from underneath. Focus, focus, focus. So if I can twist this, it's called around here. So you have that twist, which goes basically kind of like this, around something, you're gonna have that twist. Now, what does it look like when you point it towards you? What does it look like? Hopefully that light is not killing because it has some light behind me. But then when you push it down, it's going to have that look. But when you push it together, it takes on a whole new kind of look. You have to take on a whole new type of wrinkles into it. You see like the Y. I can't really let this go. You see like the Y and a lot, <clears throat> a lot of the letter U's. Maybe if you look hard enough, you see like the letter S. It depends on how it's, how much is pushed together, how much is twisted, the type of material that it, uh, it is. Uh, um, what is it? The denim is definitely going to be different from cotton. The cotton is going to be different from leather. So depending on what your, your um, character is wearing, the direction that... Um, the fabric is facing like the camera is facing is the arm down is the arm pointed towards you there's a lot of different there's a lot of what's, what's the word there's a lot there's a lot of the pins in that so you can't just use just a straight line you can if you just really don't know and just don't care but as i say a, a mountain usually there's a valley in there and then there's another one connected somehow and another one goes around and it's just, it's just, it's just complicated. So I'm saying the best thing for you to do is get or put something on. Everybody has a phone or a camera phone, put something on, take some pictures of yourself, maybe with a long sleeve shirt pointing at your camera, set your camera up on a tripod or a table or whatever you have, um, you know, short sleeve shirt, a hoodie, whatever, and then just 
focus on how those wrinkles are and then just kind of incorporate it as best you can in your uh, drawing. Another thing is if it's loose, you will have bigger, um, bigger wrinkles or folds or compressions. But if it's if I tighten it up, if, you, if this arm bends up, and hopefully you, this is going to come out on the video, you can see all of the lines, all of the pull lines are coming from under his arm. So that's where you're going to have most of your anchor point is what it's called because things are anchored to that point. And as I said in the first video and the other video, there's always two pieces of fabric. The seam is right here. So if you have the seam right here on your t-shirt, when this pulls, this might not be affected. That part might not be affected. So something else you have to think about. If it's pulling really tight, it will affect this just a little bit, but not as tight as that. So as I get more into these drawings, because I'm going to do, you know, just kind of a short series until I can explain it right, until I feel like people have got it right, then I'll go deeper into, you know, the wrinkles and so forth and how they um, affect. So, yeah, if you can see this, hopefully you can see this, you'll be able to see this after you'll be able to see it. I can't see it in my monitor because it's all black. You'll understand where you have more pulls and wrinkles at, and that's because the body bends you know, in this position, um, not here, just here in the knee. So these are the places where you're going to get most of your, your wrinkles and your compressions in the arm and of course in the shoulder. So remembering that your anchor point or the part where we pull at is from the bottom, mostly the bottom of your arm. So when you lift up, most of your stuff is going to come, most of your wrinkles are going to come from, <clears throat> so just draw it, Brian from the bottom. So it's going to come and it's going to be around, it's going to be round because the arm is round. So it's going to go actually around your arm. Not all of them, just the long ones, but the short ones are going to be like this. Whereas you might not have much here just from basic um, wear and tear, shall we say basic, basic movement. So because this is a, a, um, a seam, this one might not get any pull from it but if it does it may get just a little bit and that could be because of the muscle like maybe the chest in there but you really don't want to go crazy and say okay I'm gonna put a wrinkle here and I'm gonna bring it up and it goes like this and I put another one here and that's gonna curve up and I put another one here and then I put some here one here you know in some in some cases it may work but in other cases you don't want to you don't want to overdo it uh, especially if you have a uniform or something on. If he has like uh, sweats, uh, yeah, some sweats or something, it'll work because we want to put some sweats on this guy, on this drawing, not this guy, on this drawing, and then um, show you some of the <clears throat> wrinkles. Remembering gravity makes everything hang down. So unless it's just like super tight, but I don't want to do super tight clothes on people because all that's just basically if I put a belt and some bands and some colors and some stripes. He's got on clothes. So, you know, basically your your superheroes are like just naked with color, like Black Panther, the old Black Panther suit. He just had like the boots and the stripes and the underwear and, and it's all skin tight. So you just call if I color this blue and put a band and a belt on him, you would think, oh, he's got a suit on, so, but it's just the skin colored. So, yeah, remember the anchor point comes from the bottom. And it's going to come out and it's going to, depending on how long, it's going to curve around the arm or the leg or the whatever it is. So, and it's going to pull, get your seam here, it's going to pull. And the tighter it pulls, the longer and closer that they are going to be, the um, pulls are going to be. So from, here's your seam. So this is not going to be affected as much as this. And then remember, if it goes around, take it off the edge like that. Close up being something's going around. Um, a wrinkle's going. A wrinkle is going around here, so it's going to go around and go off and go back down Just like that. And then you can put the second part of it here. And that's just for like sweats, hoodies, something really big, oversized T-shirts, stuff like that. So, all right, let's get into the actual uh, putting clothes on the guy because I want 
I don't want, I want one part of the video to be 30 minutes and the other part to be another 30 minutes, no more than that. So I don't know how long drawing this took because I drew it like two days ago. So what am I using? I am using my blue, my blue, all right, sweatshirt. One thing about a sweatshirt is, let's draw a sweatshirt, let's use this. One thing about a sweatshirt is, it's oversized, you know that. You're going to have, just like the hoodie, it's going to come narrow. It's going to, the sleeves are going to be big, and you're going to have this little part there. Same thing with um, the bottom. And then you're going to have that same kind of material at the neck. And the rest is just going to kind of like hang off. So first thing you want to do, first thing I do is I'll do the bands around the arm. Remembering all of this stuff is round. The sleeves are going to tuck in like this. If it comes down, this is a sleeve. Oh, thank goodness. I wasn't even looking at the model. It's going to tuck in to that little band like that. Same thing here. This band is going to be uh, thinner, and then your shirt is going to like tuck in, and you have those, those wrinkled kind of tucks where you tuck something in. Yeah, that's a great explanation. So, you got the bands, and then I will do the collar. Now you can have a low collar, or you can have like a, a high collar. Or should I say the opening could be right at the, the base of his neck, or it could be down low. Er. And I think the last time I did this, you really couldn't see the blue. So I will rush this, and then um, ink it real quick. So gravity is going to make this really hit this. Go down. At the bottom, you won't have the touching because I said, remember gravity. Depending on how big the um, shirt is or the thing is on that person. But on the top, because gravity is pushing down, it's going to be kind of somewhat flush on this arm. Unless the arm is up or doing something. Coming down, we're going to bring it in. And then how about... Let's say about something like this. That's kind of a high sweatshirt. I like that. It could be pulled up on his body. And when you do stuff like this, you want to kind of make sure it goes around. Like if I'm making something go around here, you want to kind of take it off and around having that other side comes around to give it that roundness. Don't just stop it right there. Kind of just bring it off a little bit or bring it up a little bit. If I did that a little bigger, you might be able to see it. Bring it around and up, up off and tuck back, come over and down like that. Same thing here, tuck back a little bit, go off of this line, go back and then come back. And then you have something that's actually look like it's going around whatever object. Now it's kind of hard when something is really small, but yeah. So we want to come off here. And because he's leaning down, I want to have more, some of that fabric kind of drooping down below this, um, let's just call it the belt line. I don't know what that piece is called. All right, here again, you have your gravity pushing down, pushing that stuff down on his arm, except for here, which we want to bring that out and then down, not really touching. It's going to go around and then how much is going to be hanging onto him? Same thing there. And I could actually make that. How long were you? How long were you not visible? Two-handed. I actually want to make this. I don't want to make this go back up around his back. Let's bring this down more. I know he's leaning, but still, this is a, a sweatshirt, so like that. Give it a little more material. So with a sweatshirt, the same thing. You're seeing 
on your t-shirt is going to be like right here, but the sweatshirt is going to be more out. Like that. So now you you have you have the shirt around him. So where are your wrinkles or where are your folds? Remembering if it's if it's if it's I was gonna say if it's a not a, a a tight pull, your folds are going to be open more. If it's a tight if it's if it's not a tight pull, if it's a tight pull, your folds and wrinkles are gonna be more close together. So let's do something in here one equals another equals another usually if you have the, the a u or a v like that you're going to have an outside to it you're always going to have an outside to a wrinkle so if it wrinkles like this you're going to have an outside to it and which makes this which makes the other one and that's hard to do to to you you will say okay now what does the connecting one look like that's why i say you should look at fabric so that you would know what connected wrinkles look like. Now, if it's pressed together, that's a that's a different thing. If it's facing you, like I say, it's going to be pulled right here. So let's let's. Now, is that going to be this way? Going around his body. I'm going around that arm. All right, I still don't like this. As I'm looking at this, and I'm gonna make it a, little, a, little, a lot longer, a lot longer, a lot more open. So what I'm gonna do is this, this leg is bent, so I'm gonna put it going over this leg, coming down like here, make it a traditional sweat shirt. So maybe we can get some good wrinkles or something in here. That's a little better. Make the sleeves a little longer too, so. And then here, I'm gonna bring that off of that arm just a little bit. <laughs> and this is gonna go up. Since this is back, it's just gonna go straight up around the shoulder and the arm is going to go here so what I want to do is make this arm a lot more floppier remember if you push stuff together it's going to take on these almost kind of like accordion kind of you got one V turns into another V If you want to take it off to go around the arm, remember what I said. So basically, what I'm doing or attempting to do is if you have I'm not gonna start if you have one V because this is this is being pushed together this is being I knew you were gonna blur on me I knew you were this is being pushed together okay so let's see if I can get a V up in here like like this this you have this V right here so on the other side of the V, you may have like the opposite. As I say, it's, 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 really, it's really hard to, to get wrinkles to do what you want to do. So it's kind of like if this one comes up, then you go back down with this one and that one. And some of them might just be, it depends on the material. Some might, it might just be a small like diamond or something like in the middle. It could be, you know, anything like this going over top of your V and your V could be like right here. So it's a, it's a kind of a studied process. If you kind of, once you do it a lot, you'll be able to get it going. Let me just, just, let's just if I just do something like that, throw that down. 
I didn't do much. You got some interesting right down in here, which I just pulled out. But it's not on the arm. It's really not on the arm. Let's see if I can put, I would put like a sweatshirt on or something, but nope. It's like that, you know, if I twist it, if I, if my arm is straight, but I twist it just a little bit, it's going to, you're going to get that, but then you get these, and if it's facing you, how would you draw all of those? You see this, this V here, and you have the opposite side here, but then you have another one here, but then you have the opposite side there, like a screenshot or something, and then, and then, um, kind of, you know, kind of figure that one out. This is not tight, it's like I'm trying to hold it tight. That's a little too tight. So anyway, let's get back to the drawing. I don't want this thing to be that long. It's 30 some minutes now, I might do a speed inking. Okay, so he's leaning forward. So I want to get one big, like maybe that goes across here. And then put that V there. How did you do that? So that is going to cause another one here. Put maybe like a half a triangle. Another one here. That's going to round off here because this is going to be over his, his leg. There's one here. And hopefully I can see all these when I'm trying to ink this. Because this is pushing up on his leg, it's pushing that material together. Which remember, it's going to be like this. It's pushing that material together. Material came down here and it's curved and it's pushing up. So you might have this here. You might have something uh, here because it's pushing that material together. No, that would be more of a crease going down the center. It's just once you kind of start figuring it out, the puzzle, then you're good to go. So maybe if you just draw a line here and another line there and another line here showing that it's pushing up, you can get some shadow in between. So let's just say this and this shadow here. This, this is going to be really wrinkled. I, would really, I usually would not do something like this, but... I'm trying to figure out a specific way for you guys to be able to to do something like this. It's going to be crazy, crazy, crazy wrinkled. So, okay, let's put some here because of the chest, give some definition. And then just a couple here. It's the difference between a wrinkle and a pull line. So like these three would be like pull lines and showing like the chest is tight and it's pulling the shirt, but it wouldn't be there not with a sweatshirt. And since that arm is going back, that's gonna be more you compressing your um, fabric together and let me ink this while just just because just because because usually when I ink I flow a little better because I'll say to myself oh let's just do this let's just do that and I said I was gonna speed ink this but I did not because I want you to see whatever craziness I may come up with And this would be the prime example of overdoing it. See, because that's open, I put extra lines in there, which I shouldn't have done that. I, you didn't have to. I mean, I did it, but. And I think that would, is where most people would end up trying to put lines in any open space but if the if it is being colored leave that up to your color to fill in that aka blank space 
So if I decided to like color these to make these look more better, realistic, you would color in the creases, right in the crease where they where they go. Some you would color all the way, but the bigger ones you would color in the crease and just kind of like let it flow out. That, this way you'll be able to tell your mountains from your valleys. And I showed before how to make something something round. Let's just use this. If I want some um, lines in this and I want to make it look round, the closer you get to the edge, the, the closer your lines should get. Then it'll look round. I mean, that was a rush, so let me just do this. Space, space, start to come in, start to come in more, start to come in more, in more, in more, in more. And that way it, it looks like it's going around that curve so these should be spaced the most then you start bringing it closer 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 until it's just either black or you just can't see you know the lines connecting just something should have been done here here and then down here if i you know if i decide to do but this is a rush job so Picking up the bottom, some of the lines at the bottom to make it look like it's more thicker or it could be folded together so there's a shadow in there. And as I say, it's you just I just keep playing with it. You keep playing with it, you know, all day, all night. So you don't want to go too far, especially if you're inking it. Because if you ink it and you don't like it, then you just screwed up so much time that you just wasted and screwed up and end up throwing your page away and then you get pissed off and you won't do anything else ever again. So like with sweats, okay, sweats. So like your knee is going to be pulling in at the knee, maybe not too much. Some of this material is going to go up a little bit and then you have this, bring it down a little bit. And you're going to have, since you're, you're twisting, you're going to have a couple lines there. Maybe something coming off the side here. Then, since it's sweats, it's going to come down. And depending on, you know, if you have the, the type that's going to go around the, the leg with that on it. Same thing is loose here. Maybe some of this, depending on, could go up. Depending on the material, type of material, or how much you're stretching it. Tight, and then going back. This again. And then maybe some, since it's going down here, maybe some from under the knee. Try to make it as loose as possible because it is uh, sweats. Except where it's tight at. So here, maybe going across the leg like that. And for the sake of time, I'm actually rushing this, rushing this thing. And as I said, if it's tucked in, you can have these little little U's, not too many of them, U or, or triangle. Same thing with this. Let's just bring this one down more and then out. And I think as I finish this, scan this, this might be it for this video. So the next one, I got a female, but it's kind of figure, figuring out, you know, what, what I'm going to put on the female. This female's clothes are just, you know, I could put like the, the, the uh, what do you call it, like the, the yoga pants, the jogging pants. 
and it's just skin tight. So I mean that 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 takes care of that for pants, but. I don't want to kind of like cheat on you and, you know, just like oh, every, every female has got to have skin tight clothes on because, uh, no, don't work that way. So with this, I think I will call this quits. Put that in there to show he's got some shoulder, some shoulder griddle and a separation of his chest. So now the one thing that I almost forgot to do, and I forgot to do on the very first one, is erase. I'm trying to make sure this ink is dry before I start, before I smear it. So as I stated, and I've stated all of them, when you're do doing anatomy and you know that you know that you know you're going to dress the person, if the person's going to work or catching a bus or whatever, and then you're going to draw clothes on them, you don't have to do every muscle every ab you know the ribs all of that stuff that we love to draw when we draw our superheroes it's just 48 minutes it's just the clothes just draw an average body like i did in the other one and i'll do one real quick here and then you will you will understand that you didn't need all of that stuff in the beginning so where is my photocopy so this is what you had and this is what you have. I mean, he still, because of you did the shoulders around the shoulders and you cut it in, he still looked like a big guy. So when he takes his shirt off, if he takes his shirt off or whatever, he's getting ready to go into battle, you, you, you got your muscles underneath, but you know the guy's a big guy. So as I said, let me do this real quick. If I'm doing this guy and he's like leaning or whatever, And I'm going to put clothes on this person. Come on, get my better foot. Slim them in, make them look right. That's basically all I'm going to do. Only detail I will have is like the hands, whatever I'm going to do with the hands. And then I'll come back because I know this guy's got a shirt on or whatever he's got on. Um, just throw a little t-shirt on him. So erasing all that, you will never know that this guy had no real muscle structure underneath of him because the clothes covered all that up. So next time you're trying to draw somebody and you know you're going to put clothes on them, you know, detail the face. That's a given. You know, detail the arms, you know, and the legs. The neck. Well, the arm, should I say, not the, not the legs, because the legs are, are covered up. And then be on your way. So, yeah, you really don't need all that extra added detail. If you're doing clothes, then you know that you're doing clothes. All right. That's going to be it for this one. So maybe I should switch it around. Before and after, it's a lot of erasing. Okay, camera, mess up on me like you always do. So there you go. Before and after. You don't need all the muscles, but it's nice to know how to do the muscles anyway. So as always, as I say, it's a two for one. Two for one and it's free. All right, so that's going to be it. If you like it, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment, and did I say subscribe? Help me grow my channel. And uh, yeah, I always answer my comments. Always answer my comments. So yeah, if it's something that you want to see, a particular type of clothes you want to see or, or a pose or whatever, let me know and I'll see if I can throw it in there. All right, that's going to be it for this video. It was a long one. I'll see you later. And if you stay with me to the very end, that means you are a true artist and you are willing to learn. But for those who skipped out early, you will never make it. All right, see you later.